If you were to observe the penis objectively, and please don't do this in a public place or without the other person's permission, and compare the shape of this organ to the same organ in other species, you'd notice the following uniquely human characteristics. First, despite variation in size between individuals, the human penis is especially large compared to that of other primates. When erect, it measures on average between 5 and 6 inches in length and averaging about 5 inches in circumference. Even the most well-endowed chimpanzee, the species that is our closest living relative, doesn't come anywhere near this. Rather, even after correcting for overall mass and body size, their penises are about half the size of human penises in both length and circumference. I'm afraid that I'm a more reliable source on this than most, uh, having spent the first five years of my academic life studying great ape social cognition, I've seen more simian penises than I care to mention. I once spent a summer with a 450 pound silverback gorilla that was hung like a wasp, he's a great guy though, and babysat a lascivious young orangutan that liked to insert his penis in just about anything with a hole, which unfortunately one day included my ear. Like many people, I ask myself continuously about some of life's biggest mysteries. Why are we here? What is the meaning of life? Why do we have those strangely sparse, wiry little hairs growing around our genitals? Hair that is singularly different from all the other hair in our bodies. Fortunately, scientists have managed to put my mind at rest on at least one of these daunting existential questions. In recent years, it seems, researchers have made some tremendous advances in the study of pubic hair. So, let's start with what we already know about pubic hair. It's a signature of sexual maturity, sprouting up around our groins sometime in early adolescence. If it appears on a person's body any time earlier than this in development, say prior to the age of nine years, something is clearly the matter. Some things just don't go together in this world. Babies and pubic hair is definitely one of them. In any event, pubic hair coiffure is not a zero-sum game. Typing pubic hairstyles into my Google search bar yielded 467,000 hits at the time of this writing, every single one of which I was hesitant to click on until I got home from the public library, of course. Whether your acne disappears by your teens or not until your 40s, your sebaceous glands will one day, I promise you, run dry as an ancient riverbed. Although you could have easily gotten lost in her glorious wrinkles, for example, I don't remember a single zit on my 89-year-old grandmother's face when that non-ethereal soul of hers was peaceably rehydrated by formaldehyde. So remember, all of you with reddened tides and hiding, those in sore, oozing discontent, Acne is a passing cosmetic calamity. There's no shame in shame, so ask for help if you need it. You aren't alone in your distress, but save some worrying for those slowly gestating, well-earned wrinkles to come.